Oh my God, where do I even start? Um, well, my whole life I was a spoiled little kid, pretty much until I was like 21, 22, you know, you know, my parents, you know, they're, they're, they're well off and stuff like that. And then just growing up and stuff like that, see my friends doing this and that, making money and all that stuff. And I just didn't wanna, didn't wanna take money off my parents anymore. And so I kind of just went off by myself and, you know, did this, did that, you know. Not the greatest thing to, you know, talk about. But the thing is, I feel like everyone has a past. You know, you grow up, you hang out with the wrong crowd, the wrong people and stuff like that. And you kind of, you're just not yourself. You're just going with the flow. You're just going with whatever your friends are doing. If they say, hey, let's do this, we can make some, oh, okay, let's go do it, right? But anyways, did that. Uh, yeah, oh my God. Did that, did a lot of things and stuff like that. Traveled um, when I was like in my 20s a lot. Um, met a girl in Montreal. So I lived down there for a few years and stuff like that, you know. Uh, French Vietnamese, dated for a few years. Um, her parents owned a Vietnamese restaurant, so got really into that. Uh, her mom taught me a lot of things and you know what? It's been a long time uh, since we broke up, but me and her family were still very close. Um, after that was over, biggest heartbreaker ever. But yeah, after that was over, when came back here. Um, it's gotten into drugs and alcohol and stuff like that, right? Growing up, uh, I have a very addictive personality. So it's like anything I like or want, I must get. Like if I like something, I, I don't know, I will find my way to get it. It doesn't matter what it is or else I'll just always keep on thinking about it. And if I want something, oh, I'll find a way. Like it doesn't even matter. I will find a way. And that's why, yeah, so it's like, and then just hanging out with the wrong friends, always drinking and stuff like that, you know? When you drink once a week, twice a week, whatever, but after that starts becoming a routine after a few months and you don't know it's an addiction until, you know, you actually take a few steps back and it's like, holy shit, I think I have a problem, right? So, you know, I was doing a lot of drugs and stuff like that and at the same time I was heartbroken. So, yeah, so that was another part of why I was doing so much drugs and all that stuff too and then, um, my uncle actually visited uh, from Australia uh, down here and stuff like that. And he's like, hey, why don't you uh, come over to Australia, visit me and, you know, see what it's all about. And, you know, this is in my 20s. And I was like, you know what, maybe I need to get away. So, packed my bags, actually. Uh, he went back there and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna get away from this place. Um, just get away from everyone, start over again. Uh, got a visa and stuff like that. Um, went over there, loved it kind of just, uh, just chill, travel and stuff the first few months and stuff like that. Kind of trying to clean myself up, get back to the gym and all that stuff. Like my whole life, I've always been into fitness, um, stuff like that. So just during those down times, I just wasn't into fitness much, but I always still cared about how I looked and all that stuff, even when I wasn't looking my best. So, you know, I always tell people like fitness to me, is so much more than just looking good and stuff like that. Because every time I had a problem um, or I almost fell off track to being like maybe I guess a junkie or over addicted to things. It was fitness that kept it was that fitness was always that little thread that kept me on track. If I didn't have fitness, I probably just went I would have went balls to the walls on everything, right? But I always cared about my health, about how I look, and yeah, so I owe fitness my life. And that's why, you know, I dedicate myself to fitness and you know I told myself one day, you know what? I'm going to inspire people. I want to change people's lives through fitness and all that stuff. But, you know, we'll get onto that later. But, you know, went down to Australia, uh, cleaned myself up, started loving life again, seeing it in a different way. Uh, yeah, just living life and stuff like that. And then next thing, I uh, worked at my uncle's restaurant. Uh, next thing you knew, it was like a year and a half into it. Started missing home and stuff like that. And, you know, my visa was almost over. So I was like, hey, maybe it's time to go home. You know, you cleaned yourself up and this and that. So I went home, went home. I was like back to square one. It's like mid 25 now, mid 25. Went back home and I see all my friends, you know, starting businesses, doing things. And I just got back from a year and a half, almost two year trip. And now I'm left like, oh, what do I do? Now I feel like I have to play catch up. I don't even know where I want to do now, right? Or what I want to do. I see all these guys doing good now in a good way, right? And 
now I start stressing out again and overthinking things because it's it's normal to overthink things, right? We're all human, right? And the thing is, you know, when you're young, you always want something. You want something, he's like, you want it now, you want it now, you want it. You want an answer now. You don't know how to be patient and stuff like that, right? And yeah, and then just started hanging out with the wrong crowd again. And what happens again? Drug and alcohol. And yeah, I went down the same path again for the next year, year. Uh, you know, still worked and all that stuff, but just wasn't happy, right? Still worked and stuff like that. I just went by the day and then weekends, just party and stuff like that. And I was living, but I wasn't living, you know, like to my fullest. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then it was my sister's wedding and I had some family over from London, UK, that came over and stuff like that, and, you know. Yeah, they were just talking to me and stuff like that. And, you know, one of them is like, hey, why don't you come to the UK and stuff like that? Check it out, right? <laughs> and again, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should leave. To be honest, I've always hated Vancouver. My whole life growing up. Because maybe I wasn't in the right community or I was, wasn't with the right friends or looking at life in a positive way. Because all my friends did alcohol. I drank alcohol, sorry, and did drugs and all that stuff. I just went to raves, ecstasy, all that stuff. Yeah, so, and I thought to myself, I was like, okay, Mike, it's time to leave again. You're kind of you're kinda, you're kinda messed up right now. So, got my visa. Next thing I knew it, I was in London. Totally different country. You know, I took the uh, first few months just getting used to um, the time zone and stuff like that. I have the worst jet lag ever. It took me at real talk right now, it took me actually one month to get used to the time zone in London. I was actually, every time my cousin would wake up and go work, I would just be falling asleep. So whole, it took me one month. That's why I, I hate going to Asia because I have the worst jet lag ever. Yeah, so cleaned myself up, started going back to the gym, got a gym pass. And you know what, I just got, um, I just got a, uh, a restaurant job. You know, I was trying to clean myself. I was working at a Thai restaurant at the, at the same time, just down the street and stuff like that. And next thing you know, it was about six, seven months. And started loving life again, getting super fit again. Uh, and then we started just exploring London and stuff like that. And I've no, I explored a lot actually. And then we ate at a few Vietnamese restaurants, very big chains of Vietnamese restaurants a lot of time. And I thought, yo, this Vietnamese food here sucks. And the thing is, and the thing is, it's kind of clicked in after that, hey, why don't I open a Vietnamese restaurant, right? In, um, in the area that we're in, because there was no Vietnamese restaurant. There was nothing like it. And then, so we actually ended, me and my cousin's husband actually ended opening up one. And it took us about, I think four, three, four months before it opened. And right from the start, it was a hit. And from there, it was just, I was just loving life because I opened my own business and all that stuff. And it was almost like a year into it. So yeah, everything was great. Um, yeah, everything was great. I was happy. I, I thought I was actually gonna buy my own place there and live and start a new life in London. But you know what? Um, I think it was seven, eight months into um, the business. And you know what? Me and my cousin's husband, which we partnered up with, just started lying and stuff about, you know, all the, uh, about work stuff, you know, about the money and all that stuff. In front of me, he would say this, but when I called him up on it, in front of my cousin, which is the girl, his wife, and he would deny it, so that makes me look like a liar, right? And of course, she's gonna back her, her husband at the end of the day. Anyways, that, you know, I feel like when you don't have trust, in each other, there's pretty much nothing left. That's how it is in relationship, right? You only got one chance. If you lose the trust, then there's really nothing left. And then, yeah, I started missing my family after my, especially after my uh, first nephew was born. And I was like, you know what? You can make money anywhere. But these moments and stuff like that, you can never buy it back again. You know, me hit, missing uh, his birth was a little click in my head. It's like, okay, Mike, it's time, time to go back. And the thing is, the relationship between me and my cousin's husband uh, wasn't working anymore. So we ended up uh, deciding to sell it, but we didn't decide to sell it yet. Here's the twist. Oh God. And I have trust issues, by the way. And, and this is one of the reasons why. Anyways, called him out on it in front of my cousins. Um, and she said, you know what? And she had, she had to talk to me uh, privately. And she's like, hey, you know what? 
I still remember every single exact word until today too. We're not about, you know what, let's just sell the business. Let's keep the relationships because for our family and stuff, because me and her family are very close. Her mom, her mom is my mom's older sister and we've been close since we're younger, right? So she just started bawling her eyes out. We're not for money, this and that. Let's just sell the business so we can keep together. And you know, I'm a very family person. And I said, okay, let's just sell it to keep the relationship, right? Because life, it's not about money. It's so much more, you know what? And then we, we ended up selling it. There was another guy that I knew there that wanted to buy it, but she brought in somebody that was friends with them that said I wanted to buy it and then uh, I guess they just talked me into making a, a quick sale to their friend. Okay, I was like, you know what, since I want to go home and stuff, let's just make the quick sale. So, they, uh, so we made the quick sale. I ended up coming back here. Guess what? Didn't know what I was doing. Didn't know what I was going to do because I come back here now like two years later, right, after London. And guess what? My, all my other friends are doing even better now. And look at here I am, like late 20s, like and I'm finally deciding to come back here, what the hell do I do now, right? It's like, where do I start now? People are married, they're having kids, they're starting all these business, and what happens again? Same thing like every other time. Drugs and alcohol again, the same wrong people again. And I think it was three months into me coming back from London that I found out here it is, here it is, here's the, here's the little twist. I found out the friend that they brought in was a decoy for them to buy that business under, under my nose at a very cheap price. So they betrayed me, right? They brought in somebody, said they want to sell the business, but they were the one that told that guy to pretend to come in and buy it off me. You know, I would have been happy if they'd say, hey, you know what, since you want to go home and stuff like that, can we, can we just buy the business off you, right? Make everyone happy, right? Like, I still think about it this day. It's been two years, but I still think about it this day. Not about the money. Not about betraying is one thing, but I lost a family member. We don't talk anymore. Like, I don't even talk to her side of the family anymore, and, but we were so close before. That is one thing, but who's going to give me two years back of my life? That's what I can't forgive them until it's say. I put out two years of my life in a new country. Who's going to give that back to me? I started up this business too, right? I put out so much effort into it. You know, we're not gonna get in detail about how much work he did, but I put a lot of effort into it. And it just took it from me like nothing. And I come back here, I, and that made me even more sad. And what did I do? Just turn back, right back to drugs and alcohol. Yeah, that was, that was a mess. So we don't, we don't talk again till today. And to be honest, I. I can't forgive him because who's going to give me two years back in my life? So I just went all my days, weekends, party, same thing again. And you know, still worked and stuff like that, but wasn't happy at all. I think it was a year and a half ago, two years, uh, Tyrex came in the picture. I was like, you know what? I've always um, wanted, I always loved fashion and fitness was always a part of my life. Why don't I put the two things together. It sounded crazy. I, to be honest, I didn't even know anything about fitness brands and stuff back then. I just did it. I did research. All I knew was Gymshark and Alphalete. That's it. And Alphalete was, was, had a name, but they weren't huge like now, right? But all I knew was Gymshark. And I just didn't know all, I didn't research or anything. I was like, okay, screw it. Let's, let's just do it. Let's just do it. So, got a name, uh, got the name. Uh, found suppliers and all that stuff like that and then made a lot of mistakes because then there's so many suppliers out there all over the world you know it's like $50 here for a sample $50 that, that adds up and yeah so and then we found the right suppliers and stuff like that and then I was like you know what let's just go for this um, was very happy with uh, a few um, samples we made from the men's and the women's collection and just ordered. And from there, oh my God, when we got the thing, you know, super proud. It's like, oh shit, this is just my stuff, my name on these things, uh, these outfits and shirts and all that stuff, right? But I was like, okay, how the hell am I gonna sell this? 
I honestly did not think this through. Let me just say, if I knew what I do today, back then, I would, hell no, I would have never, ever done it. Let me just say that. Like, the more I get into this industry and stuff, I was like, oh, there's so much brands out there. And then I was like, okay, how am I gonna sell? I was, by the way, I was never been a social media guy. Never used Facebook, never all that stuff until I actually started Tyrex. I was like, okay, I've gotta get on social media. And then so I started in, using Instagram and I was like, okay, this is kind of fun. So, you know, oh my God, it was just so stupid. And when I first did it, I was like, okay, I'm fashion and fitness. I wanna post some stuff on my me outfits, some food pictures and me cooking and all the stuff. And you know, it was fun at first, but now I was like, and I looked at other people's account, he's like, yo, my account looks stupid for what I'm trying to do, right? And so I was like, okay, I can't do this. I deleted everything on there. And I thought to myself, okay, how am I gonna be different? How am I gonna sell this stuff? Like, you know, I, I, I still go to gym and I wear all my stuff, that's one thing, right? But I was like, okay, how am I gonna sell all this stuff though? Or like, how, what, how am I gonna make my Instagram different from everyone else? I love fashion, I love fitness. Why don't we do a fashion and fitness page? And so I still, okay, I was like, okay, now I'm gonna go find a photographer. Cause I, I, I can't selfie myself all day. I can't pull by myself all day, you know? It just doesn't make sense, right? And then the thing is, I used to live in Europe. Um, you know, I lived in London. I, I always thought I dressed differently from everyone else growing up and stuff like that. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get myself, I'm gonna do an Instagram page with a European twist. I'm not, I don't want to be like every other influencer or fashion person in Vancouver. Sorry, I'm not putting anyone down, but I don't feel like every picture should be on a bench, it should be in a park, a gas town, or you know, it's just, it's just too basic for me. I'm sorry, it's just too basic for me. And I'm extra as hell. I'm not going to say that F word, but I'm extra as hell because that's just me. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do an Instagram page. I'm going to put a European flair. And how am I going to do this? Okay, we're going to put on some nice outfits. And we're going to bring, how about we bring some exotic cars, right? Because I, I, you know, I got cousins and friends that are very successful in Vancouver. You know, they work for the biggest dealerships and stuff. I was like, hey, bro, I'm trying to do this. Can I borrow your car? Can I come in and borrow your car? I said, take it, bro. Do your thing. And that's, well, that's where it, it began. So I still remember my first photo shoot too. Oh, my God. I was, I was trying to pose and it just didn't make sense. So, but it was fun though, don't get me wrong, but everyone's got to start from somewhere, right? It was all fun and stuff like that. I just, you know, just try to have a good, uh, have a good time and stuff like that. And yeah, it just took off from there. And then, yeah, we just, we just started like doing that. So I just kept on following all these fashion and fitness pages and all that stuff, seeing what they're doing and all that stuff. And from there until now, things have been amazing, you know, like, I've been um, featured on the Vancouver Sun and the province for fashion. So that was probably one of the biggest highlights in 2018 for me. I would, who the hell would have thought a Vietnamese guy uh, on the magazine, no, on the newspaper for the right reasons though, right? Not about stabbing, not about shooting. <laughs> Yo, I'm just being straight up, okay? That's just how I am. You know, I was on it for fashion. And I was like, damn, that was pretty good. And yeah, so that was that. And oh God, where did I even start now? And so yeah, from that until then, and and then from there, um, I used to remember, oh, back to Tyrex. Uh, yeah, so back to Tyrex. Um, I started uh, I started getting a flow and stuff like that. And I remember there was all these bodybuilding shows that were coming up. And I remember it was last summer. I walked, I, I remember I walked into, I think it was Popeye Nutrition first. I met Tarek, the organizer of the Popeye Classic. I didn't know him. Uh, it was actually a close friend of mine uh, who introduced me to him. And then I just walked in with a bag of samples and I just pitched him my vision, me and my vision, and he loved it. And he's been supporting me since then. And then he actually gave me the opportunity of sponsoring the uh, 2018 Popeye Fall Classic photo shoot, which was, which was shot at West Coast Iron. And from there, it just began. Like everyone started knowing about the brand. Everyone, and then it was crazy. And then everyone just loved it. And I think it was a month after that, we finally, finally launched. When we did a full shoot, we haven't even launched yet, but we got so much exposure already, right? And then I think it was a month after that, we launched our website. Um, yeah, and then that, so, you know, 
he loved it, gave us that big chance. But the Popeye Classic wasn't until November. But then there was another big show in August. And I think when I talked to him was in July. So I was like, okay, I launched, I gotta, I gotta, okay, I gotta get this thing out more. So I asked a friend who was the organizer of the Van City Showdown, which was the biggest natural bodybuilding show in Vancouver. And then I met Corey. I remember I met, I, I text Corey. And then I told him who I was. And I met him at Gold's Gym. And what did I do? Bring my bag of samples again, which is my life, to him. And I pitched him what I was going to do and how I'm going to do it. And he was so supportive. And yeah, he gave me the same opportunity as what Tarek did from Popeyes. And that was our first big show. You know what? We had a booth. Um, I got to get on stage. Amazing. You know, presented all seven overall winners with, you know, baskets from Tyrex and all that stuff. But just being on that stage and seeing, you know, Tyrex here, Tyrex there, like everything you worked so hard for the last two years and now the whole fitness community is just seeing the name, right? And then your face being out there giving the prizes, like, yo, I did it, but it, I did it right now, but I didn't do it, the whole thing yet. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I made it to where I, I said I was gonna make it. And I was getting on a bodybuilding show, you know, there, but I never would have thought me standing on the stage with the organizers, like, and with the ch winners, giving out prizes and getting, you know, the whole fitness community looking at you. That was amazing. And so it just began from there. And then, yeah, so right after that, it was, yeah, I don't need to see, like I'm stuttering now because I don't even know where to start now because it's just been so amazing, right? And then after the Popeye Classic and all that stuff. So, yeah, so things have been amazing. And then for two, you know, that was great to end off the year. And for 2019, I got a bunch of things up my sleeve, but I don't know if it's time to talk about it yet, but let's just say I got big plans.